Hey everyone, Erin Gifford here. I have been a graphic designer for almost 16 years now, which is so weird to say, but I have a brand new Illustrator tutorial for you today, and we are going to be talking about the Pathfinder in Illustrator, which has so many different uses, it's unbelievable. I'm going to try to keep it to the basics because I don't want to uh, make it any more complicated for you than need be. So if you are ready to learn all about the Pathfinder, then stay tuned. All right, we are going to dive into the Illustrator Pathfinder palette. So if you want to just go ahead and bring it up, you can <clears throat> find it up here under Window and then go down to Pathfinder. So I'm just going to keep mine up here so we can see it. And you can see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different options in the Pathfinder palette. So we're going to go through each one. And in order for this to make sense in the best way, I'm going to just continue to use the, the same shapes for it. Because um, I think that will just make it make better sense and easier to understand because it can get confusing. So the first one we're going to use is if you hover over this first shape, it's called Unite. And it also gives you the uh, keyboard shortcut if you hover over it too. So go ahead and use that if you want. But basically the Unite tool in the Pathfinder palette will combine two shapes. So I have two circles here. You can see that they're separate beings. And I'm going to go ahead and overlap them. And then if I drag and select both of them and I hit the Unite tool, it makes it one solid shape. It basically traces the outline of whatever multiple shapes you have together and, and makes one shape for you. So if we look at the outline mode beforehand and then versus after, you can see it's one shape versus two. So moving on, the next in the palette is called minus front. So if we select our objects and we hit minus front, what it does is it uses your front shape, whatever is in front, and it cuts it out of the back shape, just leaving you with one. So in this case, if we minus front, we end up with this crescent shape, which, oh, which is a moon. But, oh, I have to select both, there. But if we were to change this, and we would send the orange circle to the back, it would do just the opposite. It's going to cut out the black circle and leave the orange crescent. So uh, that's that one. <clears throat> Moving on, the next one is intersect. So this is called intersect and what this is going to do is going to, when you have multiple shapes, it's only going to leave you with the middle shape where the two objects intersect. So it's just easier watched. So it's going to cut out that middle and it's going to leave you with these two outer objects. And vice versa, if we move it down here and do both of them and do intersect, it leaves you with the middle. So wherever the shapes overlap is where is is the shape you're going to be left with. Oh, then we have exclude. So exclude is the exact the exact opposite of intersect. Instead of leaving this middle portion where the objects overlap, it's going to only leave the outer sections. So it's going to cut out it's going to erase whatever intersects. So it is the opposite of exclude. Now, moving down to the second row here, um, divide. This one I actually use a lot because what it does is if you have all your objects selected, and let's just even say that we add 
some more objects in here. Maybe even one right in the middle. Right now, they're all separate circles. However, like if I wanted to just click on this little intersecting piece in the middle, I couldn't because it's part of a lar larger object. But if we select all of these and we hit the divide tool, now each one of these outlines is a separate shape. So I can move just that corner or just that intersection, just this little um, circle in the middle. So it divides everything into separate objects, which is very useful. That's probably the tool in the Pathfinder that I use the most is the divide tool. Okay, back to standard two circles. We are on to trim. So we're gonna select our objects. We are gonna hit trim. And what this does is whatever object is in the front, it cuts out of the back. So this intersecting point no longer exists. We just have the top circle and the bottom crescent. It has cut the top circle out of the back. And moving on to merge, we are going to, which is the third one on the bottom, we are going to merge these two objects by selecting both of them, hitting the merge, and again, this is very similar to the trim tool. Whatever object is in front gets cut out of the back. So one thing that's a little different, because I know you're thinking, oh, this is just like the previous tool, but let's just say that um, when we're using the trim that we have a stroke on this top layer and <clears throat> the object has a stroke and just a white fill. Then when we hit merge, the stroke disappears. So it does not recognize strokes. But we still have two separate objects. All right, the next one is crop. So crop, think of the crop in Pathfinder similar to when you're gonna crop a photo. Your top object is going to mask or crop whatever is underneath it. So whatever is intersecting here, which is just this middle point, is what's going to show because we're using the top object to crop the bottom object. So if we select both and we hit the crop, oh that's the outline, we need to hit crop then we're just left with this inside intersection. <clears throat> so if we were to move this over we would be left with even less because we're cropping out whatever is underneath that top object will show and what is outside of the top object will be cropped away. So um, the next one is called outline. So if you have all these shapes out here and you know what let's even just for fun let's add some stars. Oops that's ginormous. Okay, and we're gonna select all of that, and if we hit the outline, it will just instantly put an outline on any shape that you have. So then if you want, you can add a stroke. Let's just bump that up because it looks funny. There. So whatever object you have selected, if you hit the outline command, it will just remove the fill and it'll add an outline could be a major time saver. So we have one more to do and this one in the bottom right hand corner, let me 